producing more, a bigger harvest, better quality, more controlled timing, but also more controlled quality, shapes, size, flavor, and of course also the values. With less, that's what I already told, less labor, less water, and fertilizer, less chemicals, and less environmental pollution, less space. We don't have all the space available, what we thought in many countries where we are growing. We believe that with a good substrate and a good control, what is supported by a digital platform, that's what we're promising our growers in the future. We support them not only by a product, but also by the knowledge and the strategy to make a success out of your growing, out of the soil and on substrates. How to evolve to this new way of growing? As an ex grower and trust aspiring partner, for thousands of growers, we know what it takes. And what it takes, that's not only to our people, it's together with our partners. We're also looking for strong partners, strong customers in the US. So we invite you to share with us your needs so that we can support you in the future. If we will go in with our uh, next year, opening our office in the US, and even we are planning to be present with an own location in the future. So from growers to growers, our premium growing solutions are perfectly matched to the customer needs. The best service and technically support, tailored to enable you to focus on precision growing. Touch knowledge and networks globally well rooted and established. And an excellent structural stability and the best hydrodynamics with our growing media. The most confidential partner to support your growth. We've got customers globally and even in space. That's one of the things we would like to develop an innovation path together with customers. One of the examples today is that we're working together with NASA to create also substrates that we grow in space products. This is one of the statements that uh, a shell spends a gift to BGB research. You can read it by yourself, but it makes us proud and convinced that we can work together on a strong future in the US market. So, after all, the goals are to go for top quality, high yields with a minimum input. Our products and knowledge help you achieve unparalleled results. Let's do this together. Thank you for your time. And if you have questions, don't hesitate, as Dennis already mentioned. This was the end of my presentation, and I would like to invite Dennis and Arjun to the stage so we can go on with the program. Yes, thank you, Kido, for this yeah. great presentation. As Kido already mentioned, if you have any questions during this event, don't hesitate and type them in in the Q&A box. Let me check if there are any questions already came in. Um, yes, I see. Um, I think that's a good question for Arjun uh, from Matt. Uh, will you have local production in the USA? Like uh, Fido mentioned earlier, so the plan is to uh, first start up an office. And yeah. Then we, we're open for business right away, but we open an office uh, soon, and then uh, we're looking at an uh, production location in the US as well. Um, looking at logistics and uh, see what the best place is. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's part of the plan. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Mm -hmm. And I think this is also another question for you. That's from Brian. Uh, will will there be local advisors in the US? Yes, that is. Uh, so it will be mainly me at the start. Uh, so I'll be gonna go being in the US for uh, for a couple of months uh, in a row, and uh, I'll be there for you to uh, consult and uh, for your questions and uh, and everything and samples. And uh, then in the future, we're gonna hire local people yeah. uh, to uh, to to supply all your uh, all your needs. Yeah. 
So as soon as the restrictions are gone, we are going to the US to support. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, so we should already be like uh, more up to speed, but yeah. at least a couple of months. Uh, yeah. yeah. I would like maybe also to add something to, to the answers yeah. uh, that are requested. Uh, like in the production case, we believe that that uh, in the future then there is a need of local production location to uh, support the demand of the local market. So there will be a mix of uh, products uh, on a high level what we uh, as a customer make, what we partly support also yeah. from our main factories in Europe. But on the other hand, I think also there's a need for a basic part of the of the of the market what we will support in the region. And of course, that will mean if we can find a, a center of gravity, a, a spot where we can start a factory, we're looking into that. Yeah, yeah. And I think this is a good question for you, Guido. You mentioned Koi already in your presentation. Uh, John wants to know why you don't ship why you don't ship Koi directly. Also on that, I think it's not one one answer only, but it's it's also a combination of factors. If you, of course, we we also ship in coin directly, but that's the question is for which demand it is. Yeah. If we mainly look in barrels, where it's a very high quality level needed, and and also the safety, we believe that we uh, uh, use the, the supply chain to the Netherlands. There we build a new factory with the modern technology, where we can manage our quality in a, in a better way. And we do it directly from different spots on Yeah. And we understand that's also uh, an extra uh, step into the supply chain. On the other hand, if you look to Koya, it's faster than blocks. So we have a huge volume in one container. And even therefore, all the damage in, in the heart of, of the logistic hotspots worldwide, in the web of, of container transport worldwide, we really have a good uh, access to the market and we still. Have, have a very good footprint of our product. Yeah. So still, it's still a lot of advantages of the factory in the Netherlands that we treat our coir with 50 to 60 percent less water than what is uh, actually in, in the business yeah. in, the, in the main countries where they wash and treat coir. So it's a, it's a well thought solution to not yeah. ship directly in the most yeah. cases. Yeah. Let me check if we have any questions left so far. No, not that I can see. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. We have plenty of time, but I think I would like to thank you gentlemen for your time yeah. now. I think it's time to go to the second keynote speaker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Lambert van Holen. And Lambert is joining us also live in the studio. So here he is. <laughs> Hello, Hi Lambert. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Um, Lambert, maybe you could introduce yourself to the people right. so that they know who you are and then you can start yeah. okay. your presentation. Yes, uh, thank you for attending this uh, webinar, this uh, presentation of Kekula BVB and of, uh, well, uh, thanks for the invitation to be here at uh, the site of Kekula BVB. My name is Lambert van Horen. I'm working for uh, Rabobank since 20 years. So since uh, 2000, and I'm uh, part of Rabo Research, which is the department of Rabobank uh, with 90 analysts worldwide. I have some colleagues in California, I have some in Chicago, and uh, everywhere in the world, like Australia and Asia, there are analysts of Rabobank. Rabobank is a cooperative Dutch bank from originally, and uh, well, it, its main focus is the food and agri business. And what I want to talk about today is about perspectives for the greenhouse uh, industry in general, but also for, let's say, the growing media in this uh, business. Uh, well, and if there are any questions, don't hesitate to uh, uh, use the chat box and we will uh, answer them after the presentation. What I would like to start with is looking at some drivers looking at some developments in the greenhouse industry, in the greenhouse business. And you see here on the slide, well, it, it is really challenging and, and exciting times. I'm working more than, like I said, 20 years for Rabobank, but more than 30 years in the business. And well, there's so much going on. And first of all, uh, it's of course about this differentiation cons consumers, clients are looking for. They are looking for value products sometimes and looking for volume both and it's two parts of the same coin more or less but especially in europe we see this development and also in north america 
the population growth is very low. So if you want to uh, expand your market, you should really focus on, uh, let's say, on value growth, not on volume growth, uh, just on volume growth. And in general, also the, the well, the outlook for horticultural consumption for vegetables, for fruits, like berries, for example, or like for tomatoes, whatever, it's positive. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for this. First of all, of course, in general, the people who are, have, have, let's say, uh, a higher income can spend more on, on value products, which are the vegetables. And the other way, uh, thing that's going on is, of course, that millennials and also the Generation Z is now really turning on from a meat diet to a vegetable diet. And what we call flexitarian, so one or two days every week without meat, etc. Those are the developments which have a positive impact on floriculture and the vegetables. But also on the floricultural market, let's not forget the floriculture. Uh, uh, let's say the, the green aspect of being in, a, in an office, being in a building or being at home with with some potted plants or, and with some nice cut flowers, uh, it's well, it's part of yeah of your health, of your personal health, more or less. The second uh, development I want to focus on is uh, well, the, the volume growth is like I said in emerging markets. There are still let's say uh, countries with uh, more uh, income to uh, spend. By its population, so then you come maybe to markets like Brazil, like Mexico, like Turkey, etc. There you have this volume growth because population is growing there with two or three percent each year. So it's not only that the income is rising, people living there, but also the number of people uh, uh, which are living there is increasing. Um, well, the consumer, of course, the end consumer. It requires a lot of you as a grower. It requires consistency, it requires the volume, etc. But more and more, the, the end customer, the end client, uh, well, he, he asks from us, from the supply chain, for a, a secure uh, product with, with good taste, with, a, let's say, a low footprint, with a, a less energy use, etc. And I think, well, uh, Kido already mentioned it in his presentation. And so to reach those new requirements of the uh, consumer, we really should innovate. And I think innovation is a key word for horticulture. And because of this in intensive production system, you can innovate uh, in, a, in a sufficient, in, in a, well, in a good way, in a, in a profitable way. And uh, nevertheless, the competition will remain fierce. So it, it's, a, it's a tough tough game going on every day. So, uh, yeah, the, the, you can't wait, and you can't uh, turn back or whatever and go on holiday. No, you have to, to focus every day on these developments. Um, and there are new startups coming up. Sometimes, uh, well, university startups, sometimes small startups, uh, from from large companies, and uh, so uh, you really have to to be aware of those new new generations of those new developments in your end customer. Um, new opportunities, of course, because in the greenhouse sector we see now that uh, soilless growing and growing without without using the soil is important. Uh, there are, of course developments in uh, the berry world, uh, well, strawberries within the greenhouse. We see the first strawberries in North America in the greenhouse. And uh, I, well, maybe there are some opportunities for other berries, raspberries, blueberries, etc. also in the greenhouse. We see more and more nursery products going into a more high-tech tech environment. So from a low-tech tunnel to a high-tech environment, so those are opportunities for the greenhouse sector, for, for suppliers, for growers, because these products in an indoor environment have a better quality and you can deliver 365 years consistent quality. 